love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain for me to my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
As we acknowledge the land this morning, I just want to invite you to begin by pausing, taking a breath, maybe closing your eyes, and just noticing how gravity roots you to this place. And naturally, we can feel grateful for the opportunity just to be here. And let's invite the prayer prepared by Indigenous elders in relationship with the United Church into this acknowledgement. Creator God, we ask you to be with us. We pray for those who are ill and for those we cannot be with as closely as we wish. When we are afraid, help us to remember and to be grateful for the water, which gives us life, for the land which sustains us and restores us to health for the wisdom of elders who guide us, for our young people who deserve a bright future, and for our strength and resilience, which will bring us to a new day. Help our leaders respond appropriately to the specific needs of Indigenous communities. Help us to walk compassionately with all who are ill or afraid. Help us to understand that we are all relatives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And in Jesus' name we worship and we have the light of Christ guiding us, anchoring us in this time together. So I welcome you to this time of worship that connects us to the story of Ascension, the last appearance of Jesus in this Easter season. The Christians around the world will be gathering around this story and finding wisdom. 
My name is Reverend Maya Landell. I welcome you to Islington United Church, to the gift of this team that's here to offer worship and hold space for you to be present, to bring your whole self. For in this place, you are welcome. This is a community that doesn't think the same, vote the same, love the same, but we are striving to walk in the way of Jesus and making him known in a new way. So we welcome you to this Sunday, to the assurance that you are loved, forgiven, and set free. Let's pray together. Mysterious God, on this Ascension Day, we give thanks that by your power you raise Jesus to new life. We praise you that he puts down tyrannies that threaten to destroy us and unmasks power that claims our allegiance. We thank you that his love commands our lives and gives us freedom to love the world. Glory to you for the gift of life. Glory to you for his saving death. Glory to you for Jesus Christ, who lives and loves as our risen Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hello and good morning. My name is Michelle and I am the Children and Families Ministry Coordinator here at Islington United Church. I now would like to invite all of our children and young ones for a time of godly play with Amy and myself following the service at 12 o'clock. You can email me at michelle at islingtonunited.org to receive the Zoom link in order to participate. We look forward to spending time with our familiar faces and extend a warm welcome to any new children and families who are interested in joining us. Thanks so much, and we look forward to seeing you soon. As we invite the ancient words of Psalm 93 into the space, let's see how we might greet them today. The Lord is royalty. God is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. God is girded with strength. God has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from the everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring more majestic than the thunders of the mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea, majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are sure. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. gentle rain 
on a thirsty garden. Spirit water come to nourish tiny seed. God is bubbling through the soil to coax a new creation, yearning for an end to want and need, like a gentle River strong with a restless current, spirit water rushing on to distant shore. God is carving out a channel in a new direction, calling for an end to hate and war, like a river strong, like a mighty. strong, like a gentle rain, like a healing stream. It's those notes that call us to the table of remembrance, call us to remember that we're surrounded by the love of the healer. Those promises have been shared with us for generations, and so we light lights in honor of those in the cloud of witnesses. We are grateful for those who have shared faith with us and been there with us in the waiting. And so we light the candle of patience for those who have modeled and mentored for us what it means to wait on God. We do that trusting in the God who said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Today, we continue the story from last week. On the seventh Sunday in the season of Easter, we remember how all of the remaining disciples arrived in Galilee. They gathered together, and they went to meet Jesus. Up on the mountain, when they got there, they saw that Jesus was already there. And of course, it was good to see him, even in this new way, But they wondered, what are we supposed to do now? They listened. Jesus was talking again, saying, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What was he talking about, they wondered. Then he said something that they could understand but did not want to hear. Go everywhere, he said. Tell my story, even this part, to everyone. Show them how to be good disciples. Tell them the story so that they can become a part of it. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now this was too far, too much. But in their dismay, they heard him say even further, I am with you always to the end of the age. And then he was gone. The disciples stood looking up into the sky until someone said, why are you looking up into the sky? There were two men standing near them, all dressed in white. The disciples suddenly felt silly. What were they doing looking up in the sky for someone they could no longer see? The strangers then answered their own question. This was Jesus. He is gone now, gone as you have known him. It seemed in that moment like a great weight was lifted from their shoulders. The disciples turned and walked back to Jerusalem. Now they were to wait. What was this Holy Spirit, he said, that was coming? How would they know it when it arrived? And so they waited. While they waited, they found someone to replace Judas. God helped them to choose Matthias. So now they were the twelve once again, and they waited and waited. Herein lies good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
God, we find ourselves in the sound of this day, the birds calling to us, our surroundings. We meet this story in the waiting. And you know better than most of us the cries of our hearts, what we're waiting for, situations we find ourselves in as we meet this story. And on this Ascension Day, may you help us to rise, to meet the wisdom between the words that are said and the words that are heard. May your word be known. Amen. Much of the time that the disciples were with Jesus, they were waiting for something to happen, waiting for his promises to be fulfilled, waiting for his miracles and his signs waiting to fully understand what he was saying. And here in today's scripture is the story where he is known to them in the waiting. These glimpses of how to know Jesus in a new way kept happening. For in the past six weeks, we have looked at the stories of the appearances of Jesus to the apostles, the way that the disciples were learning to know Jesus in a new way known in his absence, known in the doubt, known in the breaking of the bread, known in the morning, known in making him known, known in the waiting. Each of these appearances touches on an experience of being human. Loneliness, doubt, hunger, risk, story, and waiting. Waiting one of the things we have in common with all humanity, waiting for a loved one to be born, or waiting at a bedside for one to die, waiting for test results, waiting each day for news reports or leaders to speak. We'll remember waiting for the subway or the bus or in a line at the airport. And many of you will join me in the yearning and waiting for this quarantine to end. When we are forced to wait, we realize that we aren't in control of the universe. We're part of something bigger. We make room for the unexpected and noticing what's around us, what we took for granted, what might have been always there exactly what the disciples kept learning over and over again when they were with Jesus. Wait for the unexpected. And they definitely did not expect the ascension. It's astonishing. Yet it's crucial to their experience of resurrection. And we haven't even got to Pentecost yet. Before it happens, as in the other five appearance stories, it says Jesus opened their mind to the scriptures which could mean help them to understand, but some theologians think it's the way they gave language to the mysterious experience of their minds expanding and uniting with God's past and future. As the Apostle Paul says often, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. This is a mindful place, a peaceful place, an open place, probably what some of us could experience as a thin place where God comes so close to us and we come so close to God that we know what God wants us to do or which way we should go or what God might be saying to us in the waiting at this time. In his book, The Heart of Christianity, Marcus Borg defines a thin place as anywhere our hearts are opened. There are many kinds of thin places. Some are secular in that they are not explicitly religious. Some are in nature, especially wilderness areas, and sometimes they come a thin place for us. The combination of an untamed world with solitude and quiet can yield moments when we experience the earth filled with the glory of God. For some, the arts can become a thin place. Music, poetry, literature, the visual arts, and dance. 
can all become thin places in which the boundary between oneself and the world momentarily disappears. Some say thin places are rare. Some would say we've been taken away from our thin places by being invited to stay home. Others would say that they are abundant and we are not paying attention. Some thin places seem extraordinary. The stories we find it most hard to talk about because they're hard to describe to people who weren't there. Like the ascension, they are so real, so all-encompassing, so unbelievable that we might use the expression of a mountaintop experience. Here in this mountaintop place, outside of Bethany, we see the disciples' hearts opened. Jesus living into the words from the beginning of the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us and invited us into being co-creators with God. Something happened for them on that mountain. Knowing Jesus in a new way changed them. And so we see the ascension story not as the end of Jesus' ministry, but as the beginning of the story of the church, the invitation to know Jesus in a new way. Perhaps this morning you're waiting for an invitation or for your next mountaintop experience or you're hungering for your first, wondering what to do in the meantime, waiting to follow waiting to be church, waiting for a thin place. Theologian William Willimon writes about waiting. Waiting's an onerous burden for us computerized and technically impatient moderns who live in an age of instant everything. It's one of the tough tasks of the church. Our waiting implies that the things which need doing are beyond our ability to accomplish solely by our own effort, our programs, our crusades. Some other empowerment is needed. Therefore, now more than ever, the church waits and prays. Jesus promised them help, the Holy Spirit, and the disciples waited and prayed. Both of these activities are instructive for the church and our lives today. Willimon continues, our waiting and our praying indicate that the gift of the Spirit is never an assured possession of the church. It's a gift, a gift which must be constantly sought anew in prayer. When we're not sure what to do, we pray. In the waiting, we pray. When we think we know what to do, we pray. The disciples were definitely not sure what to do next. And so they and we pray in the waiting for understanding, for wisdom, for guidance, for strength to go on in faith and in doubt. You may feel like you've done so much waiting. You might be so ready for the next thing. The story promises that it's coming but invites us to the waiting. And when the waiting gets hard, and when you feel the disparity of the world's nations too, which we're attuned to more than ever as we listen to the stats and pay attention to countries affected by COVID-19, we wait, recognizing it's beyond our control. We wait paying attention to broken economic systems, to places where people are hungry, we wait and notice self-obsessed leaders. We wait and listen for the cries of our earth. And just when we think we can't bear any more waiting, well, I want to remind you of another story. It's a Greek myth. It's the story of Pandora's box. Zeus tries three times to open it. When the hard parts the evils of the world are released, disease, poverty, misery, death, sadness, etc. What's left is hope. For the disciples did not come down off of that mountain empty-handed. 
hope. That's where today's story ends. Jesus blessed them in their waiting, and he blesses us. Blessings convey to those who receive it the goodness and the favor of God, God's best, God's hopes for us. Waiting, an invitation, a privilege, a pause before we act. This deep hope is what Daniel Migliori writes, Christian faith is expectant faith. It eagerly awaits the completion of the creative and redemptive activity of God. And so we wait. Together we wait. Friends, let's pray together. God, you have raised your son to be with you, and we sing to you in gratitude and in joy. Send your spirit, as he promised us, to free all people from hatred and from fear. Lord, help us not to dwell too much on the past, holding you to the Galilean hills or the streets of Jerusalem. But show us to know you more and more as present Lord and Savior, risen, ascended, and always with us. Give us hope and courage to live into the thin place between the already and the not yet. And in our waiting, strengthen us. Build up our patience and our faith that we may ready our hearts to receive your spirit in its fullness. And even as we wait, God, grant us hope and empower us that we may go with you and find those who will come to know you as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in our waiting, we pray together as Jesus taught us, he who loves us like a mother, 
and walks with us like a brother. Friends, I know that in the waiting, people are looking for opportunities and ways to help in the capacity that they have available to them. I'm so grateful that people have been offering generously to this ministry of Jesus Christ in this place and beyond. Thank you for the ways that you've e-transferred to office at islingtonunited.org for people placing checks and gifts of care to this community in the mail so that we continue virtually uh, to be the body of Christ together. The musical offering will invite us into a time of reflecting on generosity as our means allow. The offering will now be received. In the mountains of joy, in the valley of tears, I will love you, I will trust you. When the flame's burning bright, when I'm weary and dry, I will love you, I will trust you. You are my strength. And you are my song, giving me hope and guiding me on. At all times, I will sing of your greatness. At all times, I will sing of your love. At all times, I will sing. And your love is the same at all times. When your guidance is clear, when I can't see ahead, I will love you, I will trust you. In the summer of life, in the soul's darkest night, I will love you, I will trust you. You are my strength and you are my song, giving me hope and God. See 
King of your love. At all times I will sing of your faithfulness, for your goodness remains and your love is the same. And so we offer our offering prayer together now. Holy One, bless our offerings and transform them into compassion for others, into community for the lonely, and hope for the church and the world. Amen. I'm deeply grateful for the offering that is happening each week through the work of Robert Picard and Tom Berry helping this message to be shared and also through the work of Peggy Sheffield and Randy Marquez and Robert Huff who tend the website and share the message and communicate out all of the decisions of hardworking leaders from our congregation who are doing their best prayerfully to do work on your behalf as they guide our church in this time of waiting where work and worship continue to be one, but as we face a new way to be church in these next months together. So we give deep gratitude for leadership. We also look forward to the ways that the piano meditations and the meditation daily with James, the ways that our church will continue to gather and to pray in the waiting. And if you have ideas and you're excited to think about what might be a possibility, feel free to drop me a note at maya at islingtonunited.org. We are always looking for ways to be the church and follow in the heart of Christ. Let's sing together our final hymn, All the Way My Savior Leads Me.
And so go from this place led by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of Christ who risked for love. And in the waiting, may you know the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.